Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, um, wherever you are. Um, my name is Deepak Mishra. Uh, I'm here with some of our colleagues in ICREA. This is a webinar and most of our colleagues joining are online. Um, so we will uh, start right away. Uh, so many thanks to everybody who joined us. I'll uh, pass the mic to Peter Morgan from ADBI, ADB Institute to give the opening remarks. Peter? Over okay. to you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, can you hear me okay? Very well. Okay. Uh, very good. Managing Director Deepak Mistra, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's my honor to give opening remarks at this important event on progress of MDB reforms, findings from the Survey of Global Experts. The Asian Development Bank Institute has been working closely with ICRIA over the past two years on G20 related issues and we are delighted to help sponsor this event. The global landscape is constantly evolving and the institutions that support development need to keep pace. Multilateral banks or MDBs, such as the World Bank and the Asian Development Bank, play a crucial role in providing financial assistance, promoting development and fostering international cooperation. However, these institutions have faced criticism for the governance structures, decision-making processes and relevance in a changing global landscape. To address these challenges, the Group of 20 or, or G20 has taken various initiatives to promote the reform of the MDBs. R recognizing the critical role of MDBs, the G20 is pushing for significant reforms to make these institutions better, bigger, and more effective. First is a call for increased resources. MDBs have traditionally been the go-to source of financing for develop developing countries. However, the challenges of the 21st century like climate change and global pandemics, demand a significant increase in resources. The G20 champions a bigger MDB system advocating for increased lending capacity. This could potentially unlock hundreds of billions of dollars for critical areas like renewable energy infrastructure and pandemic preparedness programs. Second is focusing on pressing issues. The G20 recognizes that MDBs need to be better aligned with today's most pressing issues. The G20 has emphasized the need for multilateral banks to align their activities with the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, and promote sustainable development practices. By setting clear guidelines and objectives for MDBs, the G20 has helped to ensure that these institutions remain relevant and responsive to the needs of their member countries. This means a strategic shift in focus towards financing projects that promote climate smart development, from building seawalls against rising sea levels to investing in clean energy sources. Additionally, the G20 encourages MDBs to prioritize pandemic preparedness by supporting healthcare infrastructure development and early warning systems. Third is optimizing efficiency and effectiveness. Beyond just resources and focus, the G20 is urging MDBs to be more effective by streamlining operations. This could involve faster loan approval processes reducing bureaucratic hurdles for developing countries. It also includes efforts to increase transparency, accountability, and oversight mechanisms within these institutions. Furthermore, the G20 has supported initiatives to strengthen the financial stability of MDBs. This includes efforts to improve risk management practices and promote financial sustainability. The G20 has also encouraged multilateral banks to collaborate more closely with other international financial institutions and regional development banks to maximize their impact and reach. The G20 emphasizes the importance of knowledge sharing and technical assistance. By sharing best practices and providing expertise, MDBs can contribute to building long-term capacity in developing nations. Last but not least, governance reform. One of the key contributions of the G20 to the reform of MDBs is recommendations for enhancing their governance structures. The G20 has called for greater representation of emerging economies, and developing countries in the, the decision-making processes of MDBs. This is leading to reforms in the voting rights and quota allocations of these institutions, allowing for a more equitable distribution of power among the member countries. By promoting a more inclusive governance structure, the G20 has sought to increase the legitimacy and effectiveness of MDBs in addressing global challenges. While the G20's vision for reformed MDBs is clear, implementing these changes isn't without obstacles. Reaching consensus among member states with diverse priorities can be challenging. Additionally, some argue that the financial commitments alongside reforms are crucial for real progress. Despite these hurdles, 
the G20's initiative marks a significant step forward. A more efficient and focused MDB system equipped with increased resources can be a powerful tool for tackling global challenges and creating a more sustainable future for all. The G20's leadership in this area has the potential to empower MDBs to become true catalysts for positive change on a global scale. I look forward to a very productive discussion today. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Peter. Uh, that was wonderful. Um, we have an hour and a lot to do, so let me very quickly jump into the presentation. Um, let me just begin by saying that we are really pleased that we have a very highly informed and diverse group of participants attending uh, today's event. In fact, we had more people register for the event than the number of people who participated in the survey. So, so that's a pretty good sign that most of the people are here to actually see what the survey results reveal. So we are delighted. Um, with that, we have people from uh, uh, staff members of MDBs themselves are here. We have a number of people from civil society, as well as we also have some people from the government of India uh, who are connected online. So we are thankful to all of you for sending, uh, spending your precious time with us today evening. Uh, two preludes before I start, I must uh, begin by saying that um, uh, whatever I'm going to present here is actually a product of a core team uh, of experts from Brookings, CGD, ODI, and ICREA. Uh, we were the ones who spearheaded that uh, survey work, but everything I'm saying are actually jointly produced by this core team. And second is we want to also thank our partners, the Gates Foundation, Ford, ADBI for their support. Uh, which has enabled us to actually continue this work beyond India's G20 presidency. Um, let me start the presentation. Can somebody load the presentation, please? Um, so we know that MDB reform has been a constant fixture in G20. The Indian G20 presidency made it one of the one of its most important priorities. This is not the presentation. Which one is the backdrop? That was Okay, um, so uh, what Indian presidency did was it established the independent expert group to suggest a roadmap a map for MDB reforms. Uh, and we produced um, two volumes, uh, which you see on the screen here, the triple agenda. Uh, uh, one was looking at uh, various mechanisms of mandate, finance, and mechani uh, mechanism for reforms. And the second was, how do you make the MDBs better, bolder, and bigger? And then we also produce an update uh, at the spring meeting uh, in, in 2024 at the uh, spring meeting of the World Bank and the IMF. These two reports that you saw were actually um, mentioned in the New Delhi Leaders of Declaration and was also endorsed at the fourth uh, Finance Minister and Central Bank Governor meeting at Marrakesh in October 2023. Next slide, please. Um, so clearly, after having spent so much of time and effort, the government of India is very keen uh, to monitor the implementation of ideas that were agreed during Indian presidency. And thankfully, when it comes to MDB reform, there is already a huge number of initiatives in, in place to track MDB reforms. I'm just putting out a few of them. The World Bank and many MDBs themselves do their opinion survey to track the reform progress. Uh, ODI uh, does its annual survey of the beneficiaries of MDBs and the CGT has started a uh, reform tracker. And you will be hearing from uh, both Nancy Lee and Annalisa Prison from CGT and ODI on their initiative on this. So in a sense, what we are trying to do here is we felt there is one group of people whose voice are missing in this. So these are the global experts who have been constantly monitoring and devoted considerable time in this topic and they are not, neither part of the government nor part of beneficiary. And we thought we need to somehow find their views because they are very informed on these issues and consulted many of them during the preparation of the report. And that's how we started this uh, global uh, survey, uh, experts of global survey, uh, survey of global experts. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so very quickly in this interim survey, we, we actually went to uh, the survey was sent to all the experts we consulted during the preparation of the IG report, and those were uh, 350 experts. We got we heard from 70 of them, or 69, so it was a 20% response rate, which seems low, but that's the response rate that is very similar to most of the other MDB surveys. But mind you, the 70 people are very, uh, you know, people who actually knows this topic very well, so they, are, you know, they carry a lot of weight 
Uh, many of them are, you know, including a lot of finance ministers, academics, and also very senior leaders from MDBs themselves. Uh, we received responses from more than 15 countries, uh, both part one and the part two countries. We had uh, also people from uh, MDBs that working in MDBs, like the staff and the board, as well as the people from outside, uh, a lot of the government official, non-state actors, academic and former employees of MDBs who are actually parked as an outsider. Um, when it comes to questionnaire, we had uh, uh, 30 questions, each one mapped to one of the recommendations of the independent expert group. Um, and the way we did it was uh, we put up uh, these 30 statements and the respondents were asked to answer to those statements by saying whether they strongly agree, they agree, they neither agree or disagree or disagree or strongly disagree to that particular statement. And those statements were basically the ref reform recommendation that the IG had made. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so the question, as I said, had four parts to it. One part was dealing with the vision and mission, uh, which is basically saying um, uh, whether the MDBs have increased their focus on highest priority global uh, public goods and how are the balancing emphasis between global public goods and the uh, sustainable development goals. To give you a very specific example, like first question was, uh, the question we asked was during the past 12 months, MDBs have significantly increased their focus on supporting highest priority global public goods, especially on climate change, pandemic preparedness and response, as well as addressing transboundary challenges, such as conflict and facility and food security. And then it says, do you agree or disagree with the statement? And that's how you get this five uh, point ranking. Then the next uh, set of questions was about better banks um, uh, to support transformative programs by providing clarity on the policy and financial condition for investment. And one way to do this would be to establish country platforms, streamlining processes, and collaborating with local partners. That's about better banks. When it comes to bolder banks, how MDBs are doing with regard to engagement with the private sector, mobilizing more private funding, and helping clients to manage risks effectively. The last item was on bigger banks. Are MDBs on track to triple their lending capacity by leveraging their own balance sheet, seeking more private funding mechanisms, and mobilizing more from their existing shareholders? Uh, so let's go through uh, very quickly some of the broader attributes of the survey. So next slide, please. Uh, so to give you the, you know, the out of the 70 respondents uh, uh, who uh, would respond to a survey, 68% said they're extremely familiar with the MDB reform process. So we give them a rank, you know, a, uh, a score from zero to 10, where 10 means you are extremely inf well informed and zero is you are not well uh, informed at all. The people who choose eight, nine or 10 are in the high category. The people who choose below uh, that are moderate and low, but nobody choose below four. So pretty much everybody said they either have a moderate level of uh, information about what MDBs are doing or high level. And when it comes to country affiliation, so part one, largely donor countries, we had 55%. And this might also include people or government officials from developing countries who are best in, uh, in donor countries. So part one is where actually they were working. Uh, and part two is the... Uh, Beneficiary countries is 45%. Uh, when you look at the professional affiliation of the people who filled it out, 32% uh, were uh, people from uh, from the MDBs themselves. These are the staff and the board members. And 68% were outsiders. Uh, next slide. Um, so I want to get very quickly to the findings. Next slide, please. Uh, so first, to give you just a you know broad perspective, what we actually found. So if there are thirty questions ac across those four pillars. Uh, uh, in fact, the last one was monitoring mechanism, which is just one question. Then we actually can you know kind of took the average across all the questions in each category, and then you get this number. These are two numbers you see. One is weighted, uh, and one is unweighted, and weighted by the familiarity of the respondents to the MDB reform process. So one thing to see is that two bars are not very different, which means whether you're familiar or unfamiliar or less familiar, your response rates are very similar. But then how do you read the uh, number? So you see one is strongly agree that that particular reform is doing well. 
if you are between a, a 0 0.34, which is the first bar that you see, means you are, you know, somehow agree, but not strongly. And so you're between agree and neutral. And then some of the cases where you have very low numbers or negative numbers, that means you are either neutral or close to disagree. But the point to note is that these are basically saying there's not been much action either way. So the averages are pretty low. They're closer to the neutral line than to any extreme average. So we conclude by saying, and then you'll see why you conclude by, you know, into more details, is that they, the reform across uh, these multiple indicators that we mentioned have been slow and modest. Uh, it's it kind of, that's the highlight of the broader message that you get. But now we we'll get into each individual pillar. So let's get to the next slide, please. So on vision and mission, as I said, um, what you find is so we said our MDBs now starting to focus a lot more on global uh, public goods. And is that coming at the cost of uh, SDG or are they able to balance it out well? So what you find is clearly there is a strong uh, you know, uh, acceptance or belief that the MDBs have really started to emphasize a lot on climate change. So 0 0.63 means you are between at agree and strongly agree. So that's a pretty high number. If you split that across country affiliation between part one and part two, 0 0.66, part one, 0 0.58, which means both part one and part two countries agree. If you go to professional affiliation, you find 0 0.84. So these are insiders, people who are in MTBs, uh, working in MTBs, they think you know, they strongly agree with the statement that they have really pivoted to climate change, you know, quite actively. Outsiders are slightly less 0 0.52, but nevertheless 0 0.52 means you agree that this is happening. Then you, across the four global uh, public, uh, 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 across the four global issues that you mentioned, the biggest change you find positive is climate change. Next is pandemic, conflict, and food security comes out much lower. In fact, food security, which is one of the uh, priority for the Brazilian um, Z20, you see actually it's to be much lower. So clearly a lot of work to be done there. Then um, when you ask them, how do you see the balance between whether the emphasis on GPGs is coming at the cost of sustainable development goals? Here, the answer is not an emphatic or a strong agreement, but nevertheless, uh, you know, close to agree. So 0 0.35 is the average. If you look at between part one and part two, 0 0.427, and all, clearly the insiders are a lot more positive than the outsiders. Next slide, please. Now this is about better banks. So how are we doing in terms of making sure that the MDBs are able to actually operate much more effectively and coordinate better across each other? Here at the bottom line is the numbers are pretty small, so very close to you know zero in many ways, but there are some positive things. So there is a belief that when it comes to procurement practices, there is increased cooperation. When it comes to environment safeguards, there is uh, also some positive story there. And these are very big uh, improvements because these have been some of the most nagging issues in you know, implementation and DB projects. Uh, so you do see some harmonization of standard, but then when it comes to looking at some of the big tag items under the better banks, when it comes to building country platforms, actually it's negative in many cases, especially the outsiders, the third column, if you see, uh, you know, it's negative, negative so high that it's pretty much close to, you know, disagreeing with the statement there's been any progress on this. Local procurement of technical and analytical skills, which is basically much more involvement of local knowledge, local institutions in preparation and implementation projects. Again, negative. Increased pipeline of bankable projects. This is a very important, uh, uh, you know, uh, requirement for MDBs to scale up. Again, much negative. So overall, you know, not a whole lot of progress, but there are still some very positive signs on harmonization of standards across MDBs and between MDBs and the beneficiary countries. Next slide, please. Um, when it comes to bolder banks uh, in terms of MDBs taking risks, uh, engaging with private sector, mobilizing more capital, I think the story is uh, interesting in the sense on the first one, when it comes to natural disaster and pandemic laws being introduced into MD, there is a lot more positive feeling that that's already happened. And that's true. Actually, uh, it's uh, this has happened in many MDBs and this is being implemented well. When it comes to guarantees, what's interesting is 
it's uh, the aggregate number is not low, but if you look at the between insider and outsider, uh, the insiders uh, seems to think that there's a lot more effort that has gone into this, a lot more positivity, whereas the outsides are much less in place. When it comes to big tag item, again, like private capital mobilization, catal catalyzing private finance, again, the numbers are different, but the insiders and outsider disconnect becomes more and more. Uh, so so the, for the PCM target, the inside is 0.14, which means they are slightly more than neutral, but much less than agree. Whereas for the outsider, it's uh, you know negative in the sense they almost disagree that there's been any progress on this. Next, please. Um, bigger banks, uh, uh, I think there is significant pessimism that MDBs are not... Uh, on track to scale up as is, you know, uh, or to the triple agenda that we have discussed. And again, a lot more disconnect between insiders and outsiders. Um, so if you look at the one that's big, uh, the biggest progress is the fast tracking of balance sheet optimization. Uh, there, you know, the aggregate score is 0 0.32, which is closer to agreement than to neutral. Between part one and part two, no big difference, but a lot of it is being you know, coming from the insider part than outsider. Um, so in the question that you want to ask is, is it because the insiders are slightly more biased or insiders have more information that they think this is happening and we will get to know about it with a lag? I don't know, but it's a good, but the part that's really worrying is tripling of annual concessional lending, which is the IDA increase. And that is very negative. And you see the part one countries are actually locked more, respond in a much more negative on that, as well as on some other cases than part two. And here, even the uh, MDB's uh, staffs and board members themselves are also uh, slightly negative in terms of their ability to expand, uh, you know, and increase IDA and other kind of constitutional findings. Okay, uh, next slide. I think I have two more to go. Um, so there's only one question saying, how is G2 doing, uh, G20 is doing in terms of monitoring of MDB reforms? And sadly, the story is that there's considerable scope to improve. Aggregate score is 0 0.16. Country affiliation is part one. Country respondent thinks it's pretty much close to zero. Interestingly, the part two countries think actually it's higher, but a lot of it is being driven by insiders who seems to agree that G20 is doing a pretty decent job in terms of monitoring, where the outsiders are completely uh, unimpressed with the G20 work. So that's the thing. Let me now summarize what I just uh, presented to you. Next slide, please. Next. Uh, so we think this is a story of glass waterfall. It's not even half full. Um, there's growing recognition that MDBs have successfully expanded their mandate. I think this is a big deal given you know, all the global challenges the world economy is facing. And the MDBs have credibly pivoted to embrace a lot of the global challenges and there's widespread acceptance of that. There's also some expect, uh, acceptance that this pivot hasn't come at the cost of SDG, which is actually a very important thing because a lot of countries, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa, have periodically or repeatedly said that they would not like to see attention going to GPC at the cost of SDG. And there is some balancing that the MDBs have done well. But when it comes to achieving the broader mandate, which is to become better, bolder, and bigger banks, there is clearly the global experts think that this progress has been very slow and modest. The insiders are much, much more optimistic than outsiders, which is in some sense a bit of a worry that while the people inside do feel that they're doing a lot, uh, the people outside don't seem to be very impressed. And as I said, is it because of lack of information that one has more information than others? Or is it because of biased incentives? I don't know. Um, what we also saw is that the part one respondents were much more discriminatory in the sense they had a lot more positive and a lot more negative. There's more diversity in the response than the part two respondents. There could be many reasons for that. But I think the most consequential finding that we want to really hammer at everybody who's here is that we feel that the MDBs are not on track to achieve any of the broad funding targets by 2030, which is quadrupling the private capital mobilization, tripling the concessional, and tripling the non-concessional lending. Finally, last slide, uh, just to say that what are the next steps? I think uh, you uh, wanted to just inform the group that the independent expert group, uh, which is 
appointed by the Indian G20 presidency, continues to informally meet regularly to take stake of MDB reforms. The core team from Brookings, CGT, and ODI have, have created different instruments to collectively and individually monitor the pace and nature of MDB reforms. So we are, so you're going to continue to see a lot of work uh, from us uh, at the bank fund annual and spring meetings, as well as COP 2029. And ICRIA specifically starting a more detailed survey of beneficiaries within India with the goal of identifying and disseminating good practices on operating model and implementation procedures across MDBs. And we will be coming to some of you for help, support, and guidance. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Okay, so can I now uh, turn to Nancy to make a presentation on the MDB tracker? Nancy's presentation is the first one. Thanks so much, Deepak. And thanks for the opportunity to join this, this really uh, important conversation and, um, and listen to that description of the results of the survey. Um, I, I guess I would start by saying, uh, first of all, after nearly two years of debate, um, I think things three things are generally clear. Um, the first is that most stakeholders do see the MDBs as well-placed to integrate climate and development goals. The second is that current MDB financial capacity is just too small to play the role that the MDB system has to play. How, how small um, is a matter for some debate, but I think there's not much debate that it has to be enlarged. And then the third is that the MDB model itself needs reform, both for its finance to governments and its finance to the private sector. But what's not clear is whether the MDBs will achieve the breadth and depth of transformation along the lines that Deepak just described. The ICWIR survey um, offers really an invaluable perspective on chances for transformation. Um, let me just reinforce, you know, three points that Deepak just made. First, um, respondents are, with some exceptions, uh, largely not optimistic on prospects for better and bolder and bigger banks. Uh, we we can actually go back to the beginning of the slides. I haven't I haven't really started yet. <clears throat> um, outsiders are generally more pessimistic than insiders. And the difference between the two groups is particularly pronounced for some of the most important reforms, such as mobilizing more private finance and tripling concessional and non-concessional lending uh, capacity, which as Deepak just said, um, has not happened <clears throat> or, and, and is, is not uh, in process. So at CGD, as uh, Deepak mentioned, we took a very different approach, but Notably, our findings um, that I'll describe in a minute were very similar. We developed the MDB reform tracker. It was first published in October 2023 and substantially revised and expanded in the April 2024 version that we just published. Our aim was an objective, detailed assessment of reform progress by type of reform and by MDB institution. Let me briefly summarize the results today, but encourage you to look at our website for a um, uh, look at the tracker itself and then the analysis we did of the findings. Next slide, please. Uh, we defined as specifically as possible a comprehensive reform agenda reflecting these reform reports that Deepak mentioned, especially, especially the capital adequacy report to the G20 and the reports of the independent experts group to the G20. So our analysis tracks reform across seven of the largest MDBs on 28 reform action items grouped under five categories reform of reform. So the categories are, first of all, making more efficient use of capital uh, by the, when the what's called the CAF report, um, recommendations, uh, that's uh, items like giving more value to callable capital, subscriptions, increasing leverage, incorporating um, uh, preferred creditor status, and freeing up capital through uh, risk transfers. Um, 
Second, adding to capital, either through general capital increases or through the issuance of hybrid capital, which the African Development Bank has begun to do. Third, expanding mandates to include climate and other global challenges. Fourth, transforming engagement with countries. And this is a big category uh, with a, a sort of a lot of uh, parts to it, including things like using country platforms, using more efficient processes, um, uh, and strengthening the emphasis on regional integration and using these um, uh, disaster clauses uh, to help countries in times of debt distress. And then finally, increasing mobilization of private finance um, through setting mobilization targets, full bank approaches, and more catalytic tools. So these, these categories really um, are very similar, of course, to what Deepak described. Um, we defined reforms in ways that could be objectively tracked to minimize subjective judgments. So we ask questions, for example, like, does the institution set and publish targets for private finance mobilization? Um, does the institution give value to callable capital in its capital adequacy policies? Does the institution channel finance through country platforms? Um, so these, these questions could be answered pretty objectively, yes or no. I'd note that this emphasis on objectivity, however, led in some cases to a fairly low bar. So I think we bent over backwards to generate a fair assessment. And if anything, I think these results lean in favor of uh, the institutions. So looking at this slide, <clears throat> um, we scored implementation performance using data from public sources and data we received from the institutions themselves. We gave all of the institutions the opportunity to send us links to the relevant information, and I'm happy to say that all responded. We scored progress based on the four cr criteria you see. So um, progress was first assess on whether uh, the reform was being pursued, um, and then whether the institution has an announced an intention to pursue the reform, and then whether some implementation has begun, and finally, whether key actions have already been taken. So the last two categories are really when the institution is moving from contemplation and intention to reform to actual reform action. So uh, let's look at the tracker results across institutions first and then across reforms. Next slide. So this is a summary slide uh, across the institutions uh, that shows you the, not, the share of um, actions of these 28 actions that have been implemented. Uh, and so the, it's best to concentrate on the green, the two green boxes on the top, the dark green box and the light green box, because those are the boxes that showed the share of actions that have actually been implemented. Um, no single MDB, as you can see, has a monopoly on reform progress or excels in all the reform categories. But individual institutions are leading the way for different reforms. And I would highlight that the regional banks uh, at this point are leading on actual implementation. The Asian Development Bank and the Inter-American Development Bank Group have done the most work to maximize the efficient use of capital. EBRD has done the best on adding to capital. EBRD and the IDB Group have gone the furthest in reforms to mobilize more private finance. AFDB is in the lead in transforming how it engages with its client countries. And four institutions, the ADB, EBRD, IDB Group, and the World Bank Group have expanded their institutional mandates. So that's a lot of variation, but I would say that that holds promise because what is possible for one institution should be possible for the others. But what we need is an ongoing, independent, transparent way to assess progress across institutions uh, in order to generate that uh, momentum uh, toward a race to the top. Um, one other point, I would encourage to avoid the tendency to focus too heavily on the World Bank, uh, which tends to be the focus on uh, in many reform discussions. The World Bank has a very ambitious agenda, uh, really encompassing nearly all of the agenda items, 
but it is not at this point the front runner on implementation on it, many of these reforms. Uh, next and final slide. <clears throat> So let's look across reform categories now. And again, best to focus on the top two boxes. That is the two green boxes, the dark green and the light green box, because those are the uh, shares of reform that are actually being implemented. We, uh, like the ICREAR survey, see the most progress in incorporation of global challenges, including climate into institutional mandates and into country diagnostics and strategies. All seven MDBs assessed have either included global challenges and mandates or are in the process of doing so. But for most of the items on the rest of the reform agenda, implementation evidence is weak or absent in the majority of MDBs. So numerically, for 60% of the 28 uh, agenda items, less than half of the seven MDBs have demonstrable implementation progress. That is, they've either started or largely completed reforms. Implementation progress is most limited in the categories of making more efficient use of capital, adding to capital, and transforming engagement, country engagement. And let's be fair, adding to capital is largely uh, a responsibility um, of shareholders, so uh, not clearly just the responsibility of MDB leaders and management. Um, for these categories, less than half the institutions are in the reform implementation phase. Implementation is somewhat further along in the category of mobilizing private finance, as you can see in the bar to the far right, but the actions taken have so far not yielded major range in actual private finance mobilization performance. So we're seeing more action, but not a lot of um, outcomes in the data yet. So let me just conclude by saying, all of us should be very skeptical if any MDB declares victory at this stage. There's a long way to go in implementing reforms and there's a real risk of flagging momentum. Progress requires a lot of coordinated action by MDB shareholders, MDB leaders and managers, private investors, both local and international, and partner country governments. I believe, like I think most of the people on this um, in this conversation, that MDBs are the best multilateral assets we have to address both development and climate challenges, but they're underperforming assets at the moment, and there's a lot at stake. I think after all of this discussion for the last year and a half, two years, we have a pretty good understanding of what needs to be done to transform the 20th century MDB model into an effective 21st century model. But a lot of resolve, perseverance, man managerial skill inside the MDBs, political will outside the MDBs, and strong oversight by shareholders will really be essential uh, if the reform process is to stay the course. Thanks so much. Thank you, Nancy. That was wonderful and um, good to see that there is, it's very reassuring to see that what the perception service shows is what actually is also being reported uh, from the actual data that you receive from MDB. So that's a nice uh, corroboration of the data. Now let me turn to Annalisa from ODI to talk about uh, some of the work that ODI is doing on this. Over to you, Annalisa. Fantastic and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. And thanks, Deepak, for the opportunity to participate and share some thoughts. Uh, the results of some of our past work and probably more interestingly, illustrate some plans going forward. Uh, Deepak, you elaborated what experts, insiders and outsiders think about uh, the progress of various aspects of the reform agenda of MDBs. Uh, Nancy, you brought uh, uh, the evidence of whether implementation of these reforms in each MDB is happening, and if so, at what speed? And you've been very clear, there is some kind of overlapping between the two views. But one crucial aspect uh, often overlooked uh, in the reform agenda on financing for development more broadly, and when it comes to MDBs as well, uh, is the lack of attention given to client countries and beneficiaries' viewpoints and perspectives on what needs to change and how. Don't get me wrong, uh, multilateral development banks certainly have their clients uh, at the center of their operations. Uh, 
What is lacking, however, is the space and the voice of client countries in shaping the strategies and institutions and strategies and policies of these institutions. I'm also wondering, uh, I can show a PowerPoint presentation later on, uh, just in case it can go uh, up yeah. in the next couple of minutes, it should be fine. I think I'm just speaking and then if in two minutes it can be put up, that would be fantastic. So why is the case we- Can you see that? Of... Yeah, I, I can see the PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay, good. fantastic. I will just go and speak and then go back to the PowerPoint in a second. But why is the case? Why does a kind of a lack of space and voice for client countries in shaping the strategies and policies of these institutions? I mean, first of all, and it was mentioned at the very beginning in the introduction, the governance structures of MDBs are not geared to offer much space to client countries. Let's think about uh, the composition of the board of the World Bank with 25 executive directors. Three of these represent the entire Sub-Saharan African region, and two of them actually have at least 22 countries in their constituency. So 22 countries is quite a lot. Furthermore, and this is uh, also beyond any kind of uh, reform in the governance structures of the MDBs, uh, in most client countries, uh, civil servants are spread really thinly. They mainly focus on implementation rather than thinking and engaging with a bigger picture on, on the reform agenda. And in many instances, as many of us have experienced that they might not feel compelled to vouch their concerns in public fora unless they are a minister. That is why well before the reform agenda of MDB is accelerated, uh, I very much kind of valued interviewing government officials about their perspectives uh, on the strengths and weaknesses of MDBs. Uh, and actually some of you are online, I would like to kind of thank you for the time you gave us a couple of years ago. Of course, uh, MDBs do run uh, their client surveys. Uh, however, they're often intended to assess how well a project or a program went. Uh, focusing on a single institution, uh, one cannot really draw comparisons. Uh, and even if, uh, if the survey is administered by a consulting firm, uh, it might be difficult for government officials to be fully candid uh, with their financiers. So let me give you two warnings before I share a couple of relevant findings from the survey uh, for this conversation. So first of all, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, the client survey of MDBs we ran took place well before the reform agenda of MDBs accelerated. We did that in 2021, uh, so well before even the recommendations on the independent expert group. So it does not reflect consideration on progress on MDB reform. But if I may open uh, and close it very quickly, a parenthesis, uh, some of the recommendations uh, of the independent expert group uh, on strengthening MDBs have been informed by the concerns raised by those government officials interviewed back in 2021 uh, um, in that kind of edition of the survey. But together with, e with colleagues at ECREER and other think tanks, uh, we're also planning a new edition of the client survey across countries, uh, very likely to kind of go out in the fall uh, to monitor progress on the reform agenda. So please watch this space. The second warning, uh, you might not be shocked uh, or particularly surprised by the findings of the client survey. But I think that the value of a large scale survey is to move from anecdotes to evidence uh, and most importantly, engage government officials uh, busy with the day, day to day job uh, to share their experiences and reflect on them. So I want to present four findings or group of findings from the survey that might be relevant uh, to this conversation. The report is very long. Uh, I will pop uh, the link online uh, um, in the chat later on, uh, but it's client survey ODI if you want to learn more about that. Uh, but before doing so, just two sentences on the methodology and you already have the slide uh, in front of you. So. We contacted government officials uh, in central and line agencies, uh, government officials who deal directly with MDBs, uh, so managing and negotiating projects with them. And we approached staff, uh, uh, please, the previous slide. Uh, um, can you go back to the back? Thank you. Um, managing and we interviewed government officials managing uh, and negotiating projects with MDBs uh, in more than 70 countries. Uh, we received nearly 500 responses to an online questionnaire and we covered the six MDBs that are outlined uh, at the bottom right of the slide. So the World Bank, the African Development Bank, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, the Asian uh, Development Bank, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development and Inter-American Development Bank. For the new wave of the client survey, we've already been working on 
on, on the inception phase, we're planning to extend uh, uh, the survey to all countries that can borrow from MDBs and to all the MDBs that are part of the group of MDB heads. But let me go to the kind of first point, and that's the next slide, please. So we ask government officials whether what the MDBs offer is relevant for the socioeconomic development of their country. When we started the client survey back in 2020 uh, with the designer, actually there were questions about the relevance of MDBs, particularly for middle income countries. And the kind of key message is that the offer of MDBs on financing a better than market terms, research um, and knowledge, technical assistance and policy advice, convening power, I rather extremely or very relevant for the socioeconomic development of the client countries. You can see a lot of green. That's dark green means extremely relevant and the lighter green means very relevant. And just to the, the detail kind of report also gives the kind of breakdown by regions and countries. Uh, but one important point is that financing a better than market terms matter even for middle income countries. 50% actually of respondents among in Latin American countries, uh, countries borrowing and non-concessional terms actually said that the most important thing that MDBs do offer is financing a better than market terms, even though they can go to the market. Next slide. The MDBs are not... Uh, only relevant uh, in what they're doing for the client countries, but they're also perceived as effective institutions. I mean, inevitably, this is subjective uh, element of effectiveness, uh, but we, we asked uh, government officials about their opinion uh, on whether MDBs in what they offer, again, financing a better than market terms, uh, uh, policy advice and technical assistance as well, research and convening, uh, whether actually the MDBs are effective. And the vast majority of government officials actually told us that the MDBs are either extremely or very effective in what they're doing. There are differences, however. The World Bank, with its global reach, has been kind of rated as the most effective MDB across all components. But the regional development banks are not that far away. And if I may, in the context of Latin America, the Inter-American Development Bank is perceived as more effective than the World Bank across all the four dimensions outlined here. Uh, next slide, please. I won't be kind of focusing on the strengths of MDBs that emerge in the client survey. You can go back to the, to the report. I would love to kind of focus on the weaknesses in here on three different dimensions. First, uh, financing. Second, the operations that the better bank uh, um, right now, and then on technical assistance and policy advisor. So when it comes to financing, at the time of the report, we didn't focus on the on the volume of finance, but mainly on the on the how, how finance is delivered. And actually there were two major kind of concerns. The first one was the lack of flexibility in the use of, fin of funding uh, from the client perspective. Uh, and second, the lack of av viability of grant financing for certain parts of the project program. And this was mainly related to project preparation facilities. And uh, I can see also from, from the results of the client of the expert survey, actually progress on building a project pipeline is the one that received the, the kind of lowest, uh, um, uh, the lowest scores from the experts. The second dimension when it comes to operations, that was the kind of main concern around the complexity and the rigidity of the procurement and financial management rules. Uh, heavy management and reporting requirements. Uh, a major concern was around the length of processing times. I mean, short processing times was considered as one of the most important uh, dimensions from client countries, but actually the area where MDBs were performing the worst. And then the other concern that is not really coming up strongly in the discussion on the form agenda of MDBs is around uh, the implications for, of policy conditionality. Actually, we ask a relatively naive question or two to, to government officials is whether policy conditions on the on macroeconomic conditions actually affect uh, their decisions about borrowing from MDBs. And you can see the, the nearly half of the pie is red, actually nearly half uh, of the government officials who responded to the survey told us uh, that policy conditions that do affect uh, significantly their decisions about borrowing from MDBs. Uh, and uh, considering uh, uh, Yes, a lot or yes, a little. We go uh, up to four out of five government officials stressing that. Next slide, please. Uh, that's the penultimate one. Uh, 
Um, the one of the dimensions that actually um, raised the most of the concerns from client countries was the ability of MDBs to provide uh, technical assistance and policy advice. This is a concern across all development partners. It's not just about the MDBs, but there were general concerns around uh, the long-term impact, uh, the value for money, the independence, and the responsiveness. And let me go to the kind of final slide, and I'm actually within the, my kind of allotted time. Uh, last slide, please. Uh, we we also wanted to kind of ask uh, Nancy and, and Deepa talk about the mission of MDBs, but at that time, we were also quite interested in understanding uh, the perspective of client countries about where the MDBs should operate. Um, most of the kind of responses were about health, education, water and sanitation, agriculture, transportation, energy, depending on the MDB and the region. We also ask uh, MDB officials uh, um, about the sector of operations, but I want to kind of make uh, a, um, a very a clarification about that. We didn't ask government officials, uh, um, MDB officials, where they would like uh, their own MDB to operate. We asked them uh, what the government officials would like them uh, to do and where to operate. And there's a clear kind of discrepancy between uh, what government officials want and what MDB staff think the, um, the government officials want. So on top, uh, the top kind of sectors coming up among M MDB staff were about climate change adaptation and mitigation. There's only one exception when it comes to the MDBs and that's the case of the staff from the African Development Bank. And I want to kind of stress this, um, uh, in this on this particular occasion. Here, this is a kind of a typical example of the tension that Deepak was kind of illustrating earlier on uh, between uh, MDBs focusing on global public goods versus uh, focusing on uh, national development and the sustainable development goals. Uh, to a certain extent, this is an era where, that I would love to kind of change in the next kind of era of the survey because it's not an either or, it's not a black and white. Uh, an energy project can support a low carbon transition. Agriculture can be climate uh, um, resilient. So to a certain extent that uh, there are different kind of nuances and we would love to kind of introduce that uh, in the next uh, version of the client survey. But this is a kind of a, cle a clear example of the tension between uh, development and climate that actually permeated a number of conversation, uh, particularly in the evolution agenda of the World Bank. Uh, I'll stop here and again, uh, uh, last slide, you will have the link uh, to, to the client survey, and please do get in touch and engage. I will get in touch with a number of colleagues uh, in strategy departments in MDBs very shortly. I, I know some of them are online uh, to, um, to set the scene for the next uh, client survey and to, with many colleagues across the call. Thank you so much. Thank you, Annalisa. That was great. I think you just confirmed uh, what um, uh, Nancy had said, that MDBs are the best assets that we have to deal with global challenges and to accelerate SDGs. Um, and uh, in some sense, that asset is being underutilized and how we can make better utilization of it. We have uh, officially seven minutes to go, but we can stay a bit longer to take some questions. We're really thankful there are 53 colleagues from different parts of the world who have joined us. So if we, so first thing I'll do is to uh, request anybody who wants to ask a question, make a comment uh, or do any clarification, uh, please raise your hand. In the meantime, I'll just mention that we will be circulating all the presentations to you. Uh, by email, uh, so in case you need it. And, and also want to say that uh, um, the ICREA uh, presentation is still uh, in a kind of a draft form in the sense we haven't published it. So if you feel there are still some things that you want to address or concerns or comments, we'll be welcome to take that into account before we publish the report in the next few uh, days. Uh, so with that, let's see if anybody has any comment. Um, anybody here? Mr. Puri, do you want to? Get us off with anything. Deepak, uh, yeah. I just think of it. Yeah. Uh, Deepak, thank you very much uh, and for thank you for inviting me. I'm not very surprised, at least with your survey's findings. Um, I would have ranked myself along what happened. I can also understand why insiders are ranking things in certain ways. And I can fully understand where this business of climate at the top of the agenda is coming from. I'm very familiar with all of that. 
But the answer lies in answering the three questions that you posed at the end. We know where people are. What do we do about it? Because the solution has to be found in the institutions, which in my opinion are the best placed institutions that we have today. Now, one of the things that everybody talks about is governance reforms, highly political issue. Let's not get into the fact of, you know, small changes here and there. It's a very ticklish issue at this moment in the world, an extremely trying set of circumstances. This is not an easy time. It's not 1945 in that sense of the term. Uh, climate. I just want to leave one thought with everyone. You know, no matter that in the developing countries, many, many people find this dichotomy between climate and development goals and so on and so forth. We've all come from that world. The fact is that climate stands accepted unless something happens in November. Uh, where all of you are sitting. But, you know, other than that, climate stands accepted. And can we therefore do something at the MDBs which is strongly useful for their overall objective in the world? And I have little doubt that you have to find ways and means going beyond budgets of countries and reach out into the private sector. My favorite one always is trying to find segways for private capital to reach across from the developed world to the developing world. But, you know, thank you, Deepak, for giving me an opportunity to have my say, advantage of being sitting next to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Puri. Um, I, uh, I know that there are lots of colleagues from uh, MDBs and who might feel reluctant to ask questions because they might not have kind of authorization to speak publicly, but this is all... Uh, Chatham House rule, you know, it's not in some sense, uh, if you want, we don't have to put it in public, but we do want to hear if you have any questions, comments to make. Um, I see uh, Mr. Suma Chakraborty uh, online. Uh, I know you have worked a lot on these issues, and if you want to speak anything, any comment, reaction, we'll be delighted to take that on board. Thank you very much, Deepak. I was hoping to uh, remain incognito, but obviously I've been uh, rumbled and outed. So um, thank you very much. Uh, look, a few comments. I, I think all the presentations are very, very interesting. Um, what I think would be quite useful in the next stages would be to dig down deeper in some of the differences. Uh, I thought the part one, part two differences are actually fascinating. I think the insider outsider differences, having been an insider and outsider as well, uh, and I guess my scores are in the outsider ones there, I think incentives, frankly, are a big part of this. I don't think it's really about information communications. If I was still EBRD president, I'm sure I would have scored higher um, than uh, I did as an outsider. You're partly defending your organization when you respond to these um, things. I think the biggest finding, and probably for me the most worrying finding, is that the, the fact that we're way, way off track on the funding requirements in many ways. I mean, I, I think we all agree that uh, MDBs are the best channel attacking these issues, but uh, they need the financing and that's the biggest issue. I thought it was really interesting the regional banks uh, lead a number of issues. I think that's very interesting that's come across. But the thing uh, I would say, two last things I'd say, one is I'm not sure all the numbers are totally believable. Uh, if, let me give you two that I would uh, just, I guess, challenge. The private capital mobilization. Um, certainly when I've talked to former EBRD colleagues, they don't believe their own numbers and uh, they don't believe IFC's numbers. They think they're even more inflated. Um, of course, now IFC, if you ask IFC colleagues, they'll say exactly the opposite, I'm sure. So um, that number, I think, is potentially quite flaky. And on the capital increases, um, EBRD's capital increase was for Ukraine. Um, it's not actually widespread across the whole of EBRD's um, countries of operation. So it's quite specific. And the arguments were very specific for it. I think if we had asked for a capital increase without the war in Ukraine, I don't think it would have got one very easily. Which brings me to the last point. I think one cut that I'm quite interested in, I guess, is if we could do all this analysis on the basis of what are the issues that are within shareholders' remit and what are the issues that are in within management's remit? Having been a member of management and probably a member of management at most um, should we say, push the envelope as far as we could within our remit and did things without always asking shareholders permission. But there is an issue as to how much they can do and without shareholders being on board. And I think both Nancy and Annalisa's presentations brought that out a bit. 
but I'd be quite interested in that because it's it, it gives you a sense of how much courage management really have for taking up their their degrees of freedom, really, um, and how much the challenge should be towards shareholders um, on a number of issues, including capital, of course, um, but other issues too. So I'll stop there. I think it was a really, really interesting thing. I mean, I know there are a number of fora coming up in the next few months. I've been in Delhi myself in October, the Kautilya as well. So we'll no doubt discuss more of this um, in the coming months as well. I look forward to that very much. Thanks, Deepak. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was very helpful. I think the, the story of the shareholder versus management is something that even for our data, we would be able to separate those two out. So we should perhaps in the report would create a small section or a box looking at that to see whether the perception varies uh, in terms of the shareholders' domain versus the management. That's very helpful. Um, I don't want to put anybody on the spot by asking, especially from MDB colleagues, but I see Mr. Rakesh Mohan. He is a free bird, so he can speak if you want to speak, Mr. Mo uh, Dr. Mohan, um, not to put you in the spot. Okay. Anyway, then. Uh, I don't see him uh, responding. So can I get the full screen, please, to see if anybody else has anything? Uh, so we'll go for like, wait for a few seconds and then perhaps close the meeting. Okay, so there are lots of people who are here who want to just hear the story, but didn't want to necessarily comment on it. Uh, but as I said, we will be sending out the presentations and we'll be more than happy to take account of any of your comments, like the one that uh, Dr. Chakravarti just mentioned. Uh, we'll be happy to take those. So let me then turn to um, Tanu Goel, uh, Dr. Tanu Goel. She's a senior fellow and actually somebody who has been spearheading this effort of doing the survey to give the closing remarks or vote of thanks. So I'm actually proposing a vote of thanks. And I think uh, it makes a lot of sense here because you know we have people joining from different time zones and which are not, who are not just joining today for this meeting but have also very generously given us time by participating in our survey. So thank you so much. Uh, the three, uh, if I had to say three big findings which came out today in today's discussion, one is clearly that the progress of reforms, at least as per our um, tracking, the progress of reform is slow and uh, mostly disappointing. There's a high degree of heterogeneity in the responses across the different groups basically highlighting a certain degree of skepticism and also that the independent efforts which are going on in different parts of the world, in CGD, in ODI, and also in ICRIA, they all uh, corroborate and corroborate towards a negative rather than a positive. Uh, so what comes out from our analysis is obviously that there's a very long road to MDB reforms and it is very important for views to converge from a more negative to a more positive direction and we need to keep this momentum going. We at ICRIA are committed to this effort and we would also like to thank our, our uh, uh, supporters, our sponsors, ADBI. We would like to thank Ford Foundation and the BMGF who have generously uh, supported this effort and have allowed us the possibility to carry on this work um, over a long period of time. And we also, for that, need your support and keep this conversation open and active. So, uh, you know, we'll keep reaching out to you with all the new things that we are publishing and any new um, survey or a conversation that we plan to launch. So please uh, uh, stay engaged with us. And thank you so much for your time on behalf of ICRIA and the IG team, the core team, uh, for all your time and efforts. Thank you so much. Thank you. Meeting is closed. Nice. Bye bye.